Hi, everyone, and welcome to A Gem of a Secret Podcast. My name's Donatella, my secrets. And my name is Coco Gem Holiday. How are you doing tonight, Coco? Um, a little bit somber, uh, yeah. because we're, we're going to be talking about some heavy stuff this evening. We are. And though, here's the thing, though. Um, there's that thing of where, you know, something didn't directly happen to you, but you can still feel like the ramifications of it, like even miles away. Yeah. Like, like people talk about it positively, like the moon landing, like everybody felt that and yeah. people felt 9-11 and things like that. And, and you get into that. And even though you weren't directly affected by something, um, you can still feel like you were part of it and you still have like strong emotions because of it. Yeah. I mean, for us specifically, we can recall events like 9-11 where that happened to us when we were kids and we kind of felt the the shock. Yeah. It's, I mean, I think also recently for us being queer folk with the Pulse nightclub. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I. What's really interesting is now I'm meeting people as I grow as a drag artist who were heavily affiliated with that night and what that meant for the country. Yeah. And I and it's hard to even like reconcile because like we like CC Slaughters is a queer club that closed down here, um, and it'll hopefully come back after COVID. But uh, I keep thinking about you know that place. It gets really packed like sardines, and if something like that were to happen in that place, um, just there's not enough exits, and mm -hmm. there's just like it would be just chaos and um, heartbreaking moments and stuff like yeah. that. And yeah, and I and. Then, so my heart goes out to everybody who's feeling that right now in our country for a multitude of different reasons. Yeah, and what we're, you know, we're on here almost a week later recording what we're recording now. And um, it's kind of hard. We're asking ourselves the question, you know, like, what is there to say that hasn't already been said? Because a lot uh, happened. A lot happened on Wednesday, uh, January 6th. Right. And so we're going to kind of take you through our thoughts and impressions about what happened over the last couple of weeks, uh, starting with uh, the Georgia elections yeah. and moving forward to talking about our predictions uh, for Inauguration Day. Yeah. Um, so hopefully, I mean, as bleak as it might sound in our voices, it's actually a really good time for us as queer people to really understand and hear what's happening in our community from our own mouths. So yeah. Let's let's get into it. Yeah, and you know we're two friends that are having a conversation, and Coco and I both have varying, um, you know, interest in politics and kind of what's happening on, in the world. So we think it's important to use this platform to at least address it and talk about it, even if we are talking about it a week after. Yeah, but. I have a question for you that's just off topic, but is a little bit lighter. Yeah, like how come you decided not to go to school for poli sci? Because you've been talking recently about, I love politics. I do. I I have been interested in it. Um, I don't know, because it's not something that's super creative. I think that I still have room. Mm. I still have room to, like, get the experience that I'm getting as far as politics goes. Yeah. Because I've been, um, I've, I've mentioned it before on this podcast. I do different fundraising for um, political campaigns, for different organizations mm -hmm. that really help a lot of people out as well well and as you think even our president didn't go to school for poli sci I mean, yeah 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 i was just like i was like oh yeah that we're at that junction yeah i i think it would be really neat to work on a political campaign i myself would never want to run as a candidate because i just don't i would not want that um mm -hmm. but i would like to to like help out i would like to like run a campaign run someone's campaign i think that would be so cool and just i think political strategy is like something that's very neat and um, looking at like what I'm r raising money for when I'm doing these different fundraising uh, jobs and kind of where it goes and how that money's being used in uh, to reach voters and whatnot. Like it's, I just think it's super interesting to look at strategy and how we see success with these campaigns. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> Donna wants to be Olivia Pope. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> she does. It's totally fine. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, yeah. So let's go back to the Georgia elections. Okay. Yeah. And I was actually at a drag show, my drag daughter's drag show, um, when I got news um, mm -hmm. that – who was announced first? For the candidates? Oh, well, uh, for the Raphael winner. Warnock was a, a first announced to be the first Democratic winner. 
Yeah. Um, and that was the night of the election he was announced, like later the night of the election. Yeah, and I was... And that was to uh, Kelly Loeffler that he he won. What did you think in that moment? And oh my gosh, I, I, I was elated when I saw that Warnock w- won. And then at that point too, John Ossoff was gaining a lead over um, Purdue. And I was really happy. I, I was celebrating. I was high because I was trying to not be anxious about everything. Right, um, right, right. But as I saw that Warnock pulled ahead and won, I, and it was like a 30,000 vote lead at that point when they announced him. And I was like, yeah, I was like, mm-hmm. he's got this. And, you know, it was just like, we just need one more and we can have a productive two years at least. Right. Because I, um, so when I found out, I was standing outside and one of the producers over there had showed me um, the message that like it had been called and I immediately felt elated and almost wanted to cry a little bit. Yeah, like, and the I, first black man to be elected Yeah, um, from Georgia. Yeah, yeah, and I just, I was so astounded. Yeah. Like, it's so weird to me. This is This is what's so weird about the South. Like, they talk about... So many black people obviously stayed in the South after slavery Mm -hmm. just because travel or whatever. There's just a there's a large number of black people that live in the South. And but the impressions and racism also stayed in the South, which was so weird. That's like as the world has changed, Mm -hmm. like those places like it. I am getting just as a side note, I'm getting so exhausted and sad more so than elated. And every time I hear the first black. Mm-hmm. something mm-hmm. like because it's happening so frequently yeah that i should be overjoyed but at the same time i'm incredibly disappointed that it's taken this long as long as it has so much crap has yeah. happened in our lifetime and i know that our parents or our grandparents would probably be like uh, a lot happened in our lifetimes too well but yeah i mean and just before this last election i i think that there, there have only been a handful of black senators um i i want to say less than than 12 yeah, and it's 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 heartbreaking. Like I am so excited for the opportunities obviously that people that look like me are finally getting to have. Mm-hmm. But it just I'm disappointed that it took so long. Yeah. Yeah. And especially in Georgia, um actually, um cuz Georgia has a high black population. So yeah. um get it together. Um so, right. So they didn't announce the other candidate until the next day. Yeah, it was the next day. Mm -hmm. It was the next day uh, that John Ossoff was announced. And he's, you know, a younger candidate running against an incumbent who has, you know, who's definitely benefited from big business. Uh, Oh, absolutely. Him and him and Leffler both benefited from uh, buying stocks uh, in companies that sold vaccines for coronavirus. Mm. And um, yeah, no, I he was the younger candidate and it came down to uh, him getting a, a pretty, like I think around 30,000 vote lead as well um, in Georgia against Purdue. So wow. obviously we're going to be talking about the Capitol riots. Obviously we're leading up to that. Yeah. But I remember I was really elated because that means like the house, the Senate, the executive offices mm-hmm. are all going to be Democrat. And regardless of how you feel about Democrats, it was also like a lot of those Trump supporters were Republicans. Yeah. Um, not innately, but they were. And it was really jarring and hard over the last four years. Like Donna said it once that people are going to literally have years of unpacking some pretty intense trauma. Yeah. Um, and the one example I always bring up because it was so violent and it was so um, reactionary was like when Trump tweeted about the whole like trans military ban. And I remember like that is how most of the world found out. Even people in the military were like, what? Found out via Twitter. Via Twitter. And that was crazy for us to find out via Twitter what was going on in the world. Right. And not even any laws, regulation, rules, legislation or anything. It was a tweet Uh that sparked so much horrific and horrible transphobia and change. Yeah. And and I'll I'll never forget that moment. And there were plenty of things. I followed like Donna knows this. I followed Donald Donald Trump on Twitter for mm-hmm. uh pretty much all four years. I on checked Facebook. probably a couple of times mm-hmm. um a week just to see what he was saying and it was always so aggressive. Yeah. And if you haven't followed him, I'll just like sum it up. It was really 
he was always just yelling at someone and yeah. calling people like terrible. And then he would always just share and retweet things where people were boosting him up. Mm -hmm. And then on holidays or special things like thank you to our servicemen or, you know, like happy Easter, blah, blah, blah. And just like, and even using outdated terms and stuff like that. It just was, it was problematic. Yeah. Yeah. I never did, but I would uh, definitely see the news of his tweets. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. It's because it's jarring. Yeah. I mean. It really just... is. It really is. So. Um, speaking of his Twitter. Speaking of his Twitter. Um, move. Actually, we can jump forward to the end a little bit. Because after the Capitol riots, uh, Donald Trump's Twitter got shut down. Yeah. And. As a person who's actively followed for such a long time, I can say I'm not disappointed. <laughs> no, I think it's something that's needed to happen for a while. Um, and Twitter, here, here you go, uh, conservatives. You love to talk about how we're in a capitalist uh, society. So uh, Twitter is a private company, and they have the right to ban whoever they want to ban on their platform if they're violating the terms of service and inciting <laughs> violence. Yeah. <laughs> so... You know what? Twitter can do whatever the hell they want. Don't talk about the First Amendment because Twitter's not the government. Yeah. I love how somebody said, think they're like conservatives. Think of Twitter like a bakery. Um, and then think of Trump like a gay wedding cake. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that is such a funny analogy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh, but I forgot to ask, Donna, how are you doing this evening? Oh, you know, I'll let you know after this brief commercial break, Coco. Maybe years in my bed all alone and I'm facing all my fears And I'm over it, I just wanna see the sun Feel the heat on my skin, wanna truly anyone? Crack one open, feel it on my lips Running through the river, no trunks on my hips But I can't anymore, my routine feels like a chore And I do anything just to kick it like before And unfortunately, I don't live in luxury I'm working my ass off and I can use a summer breeze I'm lucky I have you or I'd be crazy Totally does everything chill to the last day finally <laughs> Back 
and we're doing something a little bit different. That music that you just heard was from Portland rapper Tono, um, because this episode is a little bit different. Uh, it's also something that we're going to just try to keep doing uh, on the podcast. We want to highlight some local artists. Tonight, uh, we're talking about the riots and the attacks that happened on the Capitol on uh, Wednesday, January 6th. Uh, Coco, I am feeling a little bit somber still, but I think it's important that we use this platform to process these things and talk about it. Yeah, because the one thing that's really great about what me and Donna have done with our podcast is even though it doesn't seem like it has direction, it absolutely has direction to us. (laughs) And we want to talk about current events. We do. As much as we want to maybe sometimes do, you know, true crime or coming out stories or Mm -hmm. talking about gender or drag specifically because we're both drag queens. Like, so with this, uh, the U.S. Capitol riots, I, gosh, I still feel so, okay, let me back up. Mm -hmm. I didn't immediately get emotionally invested in them. When they first started, like when I started seeing memes, like like I think the first thing I saw was a Facebook thing that says, what is happening at the Capitol or something like that. Yeah. And yeah. I was like, what's going on? And then like I started researching it and I was just like, I was like seeing news updates and I was like, oh, that seems really aggressive. Oh, that seems really aggressive. Like, and I just like kind of went on about my day. Yeah. And it wasn't until probably two days later when I was like, wait a second. Like I... So, number one, the majority of the people that at the Capitol doing all of that were white. Mm-hmm. Um, and I do believe in that whole thing of where I did. I watched the video of, like, the police officers just, like, moving aside. Yeah. Like, they didn't even, like, try. Like, yeah. <laughs> they're just like, oh, well, okay. <laughs> yeah. And I was so disappointed in that. And I was heartbroken as more videos kept coming out on Twitter and Facebook. Well, I think the biggest thing was there wasn't enough of them to start. Mm. To start. And that was something that was, we think, done on purpose by the president. I mean. Oh, I think, absolutely. I think that uh, that is a huge issue. Um, there's a, a viral clip of the riots that's been going around of the riot the terrorist attack let's let's call it what it was it mm-hmm. was a terrorist attack mm-hmm. a domestic terrorist attack mm-hmm. that happened on the capitol and it's the one where the uh black police officer is being chased up the stairs and he's kind of like leading them um through these halls and basically it was kind of a smart tactic because it was leading them to another area that was filled with security yeah um so he was able to get them kind of away from staff that could have been hurt by some of the rioters Gosh, and that's so alarming yeah yeah so you know like it, we were lucky t- that there were people that you know weren't hurt um and in that and and even with more that, people yeah more people um me and Donna were watching a brief video before we started this podcast today and every angle and every shot and every video I've seen is just like it's really terrifying sometimes when you see white people getting that angry. Yeah. Like, because there's just no justice also with a mob like that. I mean, it, it it reminds me of the Klan. Honestly, it does. Yeah. It reminds me of we are going to do all of these things without consequences. Like the Tulsa riots, you know, yeah. the Tulsa race riots or something like that. It's It's violent. Like, it's a violent display of white supremacy. And... Yes. That's, you know, that's the sad thing. And this, that's the thing that, you know, we've been trying to talk to about to, I mean, for me specifically, I've been trying to talk to uh, with my conservative family about about how, you know, this is white supremacy is something that, you know, is embedded in our society. And it's a sickness. It's a disease. It's something that we have to, like, you know, really, like, get past already because mm-hmm. it's it's terrible. But uh, they... <sighs> They they get defensive about it instead of wanting they to. They do, you know, and that's also heartbreaking and angry and so you know. angry. I I think I said this once on this podcast before, but for those of you, because we're getting a lot of new listeners, who mm-hmm. some of you are going back, some of you are not. But one of the things that always got to me, I was in a book club once, mm-hmm. and we read The Help, mm-hmm. and there is a scene, not the scene, like a chapter in The Help where there's this really promising young black man mm-hmm. who's supposed to like go away to college or whatever. And I, and sorry if I get it wrong listeners, but I think he was in a hardware store 
and he shouldn't have been in that section or in the store in general. Yeah. And um, these two white men in the book, like, beat him within an inch of his life, and, like, they mess up his eye to, I think, where he's probably blind, and they, like, mess up his hand, too. And, Mm -hmm. and, like, it just was a really aggressive scene. And I remember... (laughs) I remember this part. I don't know if I ever told Donna this part of the story. I got stuck on that. I asked my white friend in the room with me. I said, I'm just really stuck on how you can see a person, like, you know, in the wrong section of the bus or a person in the store or something like that. And then having um, this reaction to seeing this black kid in a store and immediately wanting to hurt them like this like and people call it fear you know like Mm -hmm. like and that's why it equates to the capital riots like this fear is causing this anger that turns violent and it's so i mean we can even equate it partially to like um outrage as well yeah you know and just this person has now changed like what happened with our country was just so violent to these people like they're whole expression has changed. And remember that phrase too. Yeah. That um when you lose privilege, it feels um it hurts you. Yeah. And you fight back against when you're losing your privilege. Yeah. That's yeah. kind of how I feel about it. I mean, and I think that we also just need to reiterate what people have been saying about the difference between this and the and the protests, the peaceful protests that happened this summer. Yeah. Um what was it? Uh the um, we were protesting because you were murdering people. And let's face it, riots and protests, because there were riots that happened too. Oh, uh, yeah, you know? absolutely. Riots and protests. This was, and people are trying to refer to this as a simple riot when it was clearly a domestic terrorist attack. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, five people died. Yeah. Um, like, But no, seriously, the, the BLM protests and even the riots mm-hmm. were anger and pushing back against your government for not protecting its citizens yes. um, from death. From death, yes. This is, I didn't get my way, and I think it's going to suck. Yeah, yeah. It's I, like, so I privileged. Think. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like th- things aren't going to be the way that I want them to be, or, you know, try- some sort of sense of trying to, like, protect traditional values, even though it's like, what traditional values was Trump really ever, like, about? Ever. Ever. Like Just in in general, like I mean, it's the same re- reason why I'm perplexed that churches, you know, and religious institutions endorse mm. someone like that, and then it it gives you, you know, it it you you get to look at these institutions and be like, of course they do, because you know they're not morally, they don't have any moral high ground. Absolutely, you know? these institutions don't if they if they're willing to endorse someone like this for four mm-hmm. years, and now you finally have Republicans that are denouncing him, Mitch McConnell. Um, is happy that articles of impeachment are on the floor Sorry. for him. What? Yeah, I was just watching news. <laughs> just all of news? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was just watching news today. Um, both CNN and Fox are saying there's reports of Mitch McConnell saying he's happy that uh, articles of impeachment are on the floor for Trump for the second time. My eyes did a googly thing, listeners. I'm yeah. just like, I'm so floored. Because me and Don are trying to not talk too much before we film our episodes so we can like have a natural dialogue. Yeah. And I did not know that that was yeah. out there. Yep. I am so floored. So, I mean, all you need is a handful of Republican senators to support a second impeachment and McConnell being one of them. Oh, the, the, Senate, Senate, the Senate Majority Leader. Senate I always majority. forget the titles. <laughs> Senate Majority yes, Leader, Yes, yeah. McConnell, the current Senate Majority Leader, you know, I... If he's supporting it, then that means that other Republicans are going to get on board. And actually, and I do remember the one meme in relation to what you just said that hit Mm -hmm. me the most is seeing a Confederate flag waving inside of the... Because I consider myself to be patriotic. Mm -hmm. I I do. And seeing a Confederate flag waving back and forth in the U.S. Capitol was really jarring to me. How sadly poetic, too. You know, like... That it hadn't even happened when this, you know, when the Civil War was happening, mm-hmm. because you know which side won. Right. That now it was happening in in this day and age. And what's even more jarring about that yeah. is, I absolutely and fervently disagree with the Electoral College and how it stands today, and especially yeah. its inception. But I was like, these were they were counting the Electoral College votes, and that's why this riot happened to like, like what were they hoping would accomplish? We're like, we're going to 
not learn how to count anymore. Like uh, the count was always going to happen. Yeah. Regardless if you stopped it for uh, 12 hours of horrible violence. Yeah. Like, and, and it was, it was so every video you're seeing people push down, get, like even the BLM protests, cause we live here in Portland. Mm-hmm. Um, even the BLM protests when they, they never really knocked down the gates. They didn't storm like the government buildings. They mm-hmm. might've like thrown firecrackers and whatever, but they never stormed inside and destroyed the whole place and stole everything. No. Like even like left so, threatening notes. Yeah, left threatening stole notes. Stole government property. Yeah, never stole government property. Oh, and guess what? They wear their masks yeah. as well. That's a thing that happened with the BLM mm-hmm. protests. Like so whenever whenever people compare them, which is what a lot of people would say at newscasters as they were trying to film it, is yeah. they'd be like, oh, this is just like the BLM protests. Like this is all it is. And I'm just like, Wow. I was no. like, then go out and block a highway. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, no, I I think I think it's definitely um, apples and rocket launchers. It's definitely <laughs> two completely different things. Um, I, yeah, I, uh, it makes me really angry when, um, I, just knowing the intention of these riots and what, we were out protesting for this summer mm-hmm. and, and just knowing that uh, the reason why these people thought it was necessary to go in and, and, you know, evoke terror um, on the Capitol and um, cause death. Like, right. It was all because their side didn't win. Well, in a democracy or a democratic Republic, it's supposed to be, it's supposed to be um, you have elected officials who are re- representing the majority of people. Yeah. And um, and if you want to change things, obviously peaceful protesting and rioting can be effective. But what were you looking to change? Like the only outcome that they were looking to change is hopefully keeping Trump in office. Yeah. But that system that screwed us all over four years ago to get Trump elected was the same system that was used today. Yeah. And there wasn't any election fraud, no. pro- proven election fraud. No. And so it was literally a riot of a bunch of people who just didn't get their way. And they know that. And so that's why the blood that was shed on that day is on their hands. You know, they know that it wasn't. And they're, and they're still, it, it, you know, throwing, fanning the flames of this fire, putting... Mm-hmm. Putting gasoline on it. And I said, because you're not on Facebook, this is what I said. Mm-hmm. I'm really not mad at people who voted for Trump anymore because I can't hold on to that anger. Mm-hmm. I was like, but I do hold you accountable and personally responsible for the violence that happened yeah. at the Capitol yeah. if you voted for this person. Yeah. I was like, because outside of the fact that they, uh, Trump incited violence, it was also the people who, in like, who gave him power to feel like he could do that. Yeah. Like, and if you think that you're not accountable, um, if you voted for Trump, then you're sadly mistaken. Yes. You might not have been at the Capitol. And yes, you thought that Trump might've been good for the economy specifically. It's always about the economy. Mm -hmm. Um, You are responsible because you let those words, you didn't call, like if you didn't call your representatives and if you didn't get actively involved in removing him from power, like you're to blame yeah. and you're partially responsible for the things that happened at the Capitol. Well, and I think we also need to hold those um, people in Congress accountable, like uh, uh, Ted Cruz, who, oh, yes. who were still in favor of um, trying to overturn, you know, trying to say that the, there was fraud in this election. Right. Um, I. It's just... They're they're also like I said, fanning those flames and and uh, adding to the fact that there's this whole conspiracy that this election was stolen because that's truly why these people are angry, right? Right, and you know? they were angry because they didn't get their two thousand dollar stimulus check that Trump um, later came to be in support of. Yeah, um, as soon as it was turned down. Yeah. So um, let's talk just real briefly about uh, the victims. Yeah. Of. So uh, there were five people that unfortunately lost their lives that day. Uh, there was Officer Sicknick, uh, Ashley Babbitt, Kevin Greeson, Roseanne Boyland, and uh, Benjamin Phillips. 
So. We did find out that um, two of them actually had like a stroke or a heart attack. Um, yeah. During like because of obviously everything that was happening, um, but three of them, uh, it was in relation to the violence. Yeah, one of them was po- possibly trampled, um, and then other one was uh, shot by a police officer, and, and then the police officer was beaten to death by a fire extinguisher. I saw the video of Ashley, what they assumed to be Ashley Babbitt getting shot. Uh-huh. I found it on Twitter. Um, and cl- it was very clear what was happening. Yeah. And like, I it, didn't see the video, what was happening. So I, she was like, they were, the door was barricaded mm-hmm. and she was trying to break a window to get through a door. Mm. Um, in the Capitol and you just see the guy pull his gun out Mm -hmm. and they're still coming forward and he shoots and it Mm -hmm. just knocks her back. She recoils onto the ground actually is what happens. If that's actually her, that's what happened. Mm -hmm. Um, And people just kind of stand around like, Oh, like she got shot. Like, Mm -hmm. like confused, almost like that's what speaks to me so loud about privilege. Like, how are you confused of why somebody used a deadly weapon against you as you're trying to break into a federal building? With deadly weapons. With deadly weapons. <laughs> like, with screaming and yelling and to where they have to, as we haven't said yet, they had to evacuate Mike Pence from the building. Mm-hmm. Um, do you know, have you heard in the news, if he was he was supposed to be... Uh, invoke the what is it the 25th 25th amendment Amendment. i uh don't know if uh pence is willing to do it i think pence is a um yeah i think pence is a sad excuse for a person i think that he doesn't have any he has no backbone no no i don't think he has any backbone at all and um yeah there was also a possibility i think they said something about the 14th amendment there was another amendment they were talking about um Mm. that had language that had to do with uh insurrection um, but I don't know where that ever went. I think the best possible path forward is going to be impeachment, and especially if we have McConnell saying now that he's angry. Because McConnell now, what the news is reporting, and it's all just headlines, there has not been a, an official statement released from Mitch McConnell about this, but uh, is basically saying that he wants Donald Trump to have no chance in the GOP moving forward, and impeachment is the path forward for that to happen. Oh, that's a good idea. Because people are just saying in another four years, but that would be a way of making it not happen. And they would have to do that now. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's close. Yeah. Um, Now that makes more sense to me. You heard it here, like fifth listeners. Um, (laughs) So I want to, so before we talk about, because me and Donna want to talk about what we think is going to happen on Inauguration Day. Mm -hmm. um, Did you see on Twitter about the no fly list? Thing. Yeah, oh my gosh, it was so great. Time. Oh gosh, oh my, it was so, so great. Funny. Them watching them whine. Oh my gosh, just like I wanted to like lick up their tears. It was so <laughs> <laughs> I need the sustenance. Yeah. No, it's true. I um I and I thought it was a fake video and even if it was um the one about the guy who was just like you're treating me like a black person. I was just so floored by that they know so it's like they know but they don't care enough because their privilege makes it to where they don't have to care yeah um and it's actually just really like i did it for you and i just like i was like but that means our government even acknowledged that they're terrorists because that's how you get on the no-fly list is by Mm -hmm. being a terrorist and like i just i loved all the the ones i did like the most it's like gave me my little randy moment was when they're having to leave the plane and they're cla- yeah. like, everybody's like clapping on the plane yeah, and they're like having to get their carry ons and they're like, yeah, sorry. You just like really can't be on a plane. Like, yeah. Ooh. Yeah. You're just, <laughs> you're a fucking domestic terrorist <laughs> yeah. and you got to get treated as such. And you know what the best thing about all this is too, is that the people that are convicted of felonies lose their rights to vote and can't own firearms. Oh, that's beautiful. Right. That's absolutely beautiful because Like we said, five people died in relation to what happened that day. And um, there really does need to be consequences. Like, I I know that, like, this is what's crazy about the internet. I don't believe in cancel culture. I really don't. But literally, like, find those people. Find those people, and they should be arrested for Mm -hmm. what they did. I don't really, I really don't need them to lose their jobs. I want to be arrested. The FBI is. I mean, they're currently looking at people who, I mean, they're looking at where people were spending their money. 
you know, looking yeah. at their entire planned trips there for this uh, big old stop the steel rally they decided to have that turned mm-hmm. into domestic terrorism. So, um, yeah, no, the FBI is looking at the people that were part of this and are prosecuting them. So Good. As they should be. Good, as they should be. I yeah. mean, like, gosh, if they were black, they'd just be dead. So at least we could get them arrested. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. Um, so let's talk about Inauguration Day. Yeah. What are your predictions? I think that we're going to see, I think it's going to be very bittersweet for Joe Biden. I think we're going to see a hyper increased uh security and police presence for joe biden um because of potential already uh planned uh insurrections and uh attacks that are being anticipated yeah anticipated premeditated however yeah so i think that we'll see a huge amount of security around joe biden i think trump will do everything he can to try and make this day not a good one for biden Um, I don't think that, I don't know if we'll get to impeachment proceedings for Trump until after Inauguration Day. And that does stink because that does mean that there's going to be a little bit of time that we can't focus like legislation that Biden and uh, Harris want to introduce immediately, which I think is going to be some nice stimulus for us coming in mid-February, along with some hopefully student debt relief. Um, I kind of foresee that happening first in February, but yeah. I um, foresee um, a terrorist attack slash um, an assassination attempt. Um, I do. I see those things because... So the thing about liberals and progressives, is as crazy as they can be, like they kind of just sit there and took it for four years, you know? But literally these Trump supporters who I consider to be cult members... Mm-hmm. Um, stormed a federal building with weapons. Mm-hmm. It just scares me. Yeah, I think I think there will be an attempt and I and I I used to say um he might be. I'm just going to say it's an attempt because mm-hmm. they will have increased security. They have to because they literally show that they don't give a crap about federal government federal land. Yeah. And they just don't. So we may even see an inauguration not take place at the Capitol. We may see an a, like in a remote inauguration inauguration happen or something. I like that. actually would be I would prefer that. The yeah. thing is, I know that Biden shouldn't show that he's terrified of um, his constituents, but at the same time, or his citizens, but at the same time, it's more important for me as an American citizen to see the work that Biden's going to do versus having some flashy thing that I'm not even going to be at anyway and mm-hmm. what's going to watch on the news anyway. I don't care if it's underground. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, I don't. Yeah. Yeah. It's unfair, but the work that Biden needs to do is so much more important it's so to me. so important. Yeah we, need, yeah. we need this administration thriving for as long as they can because there's an intense amount of damage that needs to be undone from this these last four years with Trump, honestly. There's so many policies that need to be undone. There is um, a reputation with other world leaders that needs to be built back up, our foreign policy. There's just a lot of work for us to do because the U.S. is, I think, in, you know, in the lowest, one of the lowest and darkest places we've been in and in a long time. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I just think that knowing where we're at and then even having uh uh like all like having all Democrats being able to pave the way forward, we still have to get there yeah. first. Yeah. And I'm I'm really worried about that and what that picture looks like. I mean, we still have a Supreme Court that is just packed full of people who just don't agree with like some of the views that I have. And yeah. And they did. Like, I mean, they pushed those people in there. um, And they're all very conservative Mm -hmm. for the most part. And that's really uncomfortable. Like, I know that people like to say, like, uh, what was her name? Amy Comey Barrett. Mm -hmm. Like, she, I watched her. And, like, yeah, she came off well-read. And, you know, like, she went through a bunch of questions and things like that. But she did the whole political route and she said she's like i can't speak on cases that i haven't actually seen in front of me and she hypotheticals kept, she's, basically like she's like i'm not going to play into hypotheticals uh-huh. and like the thing is you would love to actually assume that all your judges were going to be fair and impartial but the way that she answered those questions in her background made me feel so uncomfortable so yeah. is um 
I'm just really hoping that we can, I hope that the world just gets a little bit better. Yeah. That's definitely. the best way to say it. Definitely. Yeah. And I hope that uh, our people start getting taken care of because this is honestly, it's just been a, a very rough, it's been a rough year um, with all this happening. And uh, this, I mean, this last year, and <laughs> it's already been a rough start to the year with all of this. So, And I really hope that the thing that Joe Biden does first, yes, I would love my student loan debt forgiven a little bit of it, but what he needs to focus on more so than anything is the American people in, in relation to COVID, yes. meaning vaccines, stimulus checks, and all that other stuff. Like that, that is so first and foremost because it's so alarming the number of people who have died in relation to COVID related illnesses. I think we'll see a continuance in shutdowns too. I think we will too. And I don't think that, I don't think that that's out of place. Yeah. Honestly, I don't think that that's out of place. Yeah. And I know that that's hard on small businesses. I'm not trying to be cold or heartless yeah. any by any means listeners. I'm just saying those vaccines are not being distributed fast enough. No. And we don't even know their effectiveness per se just yet. Um, on this global scale, and I just really am worried about. The I mean, that's a another bit. lie Trump ended his run with, saying that he would get out a hundred million vaccines, and he barely got to three million, four million. Yeah, yeah. At the rate that they're going, what do they say it was going to take sixty-five years if they're going to go at that same pace? Yeah, one million in like a, like six weeks. Yeah, for. 364 million people. And that's if the vaccine was 100% effective and there weren't more mutant strains of this virus already developing. Yeah, literally. They said, oh, the vaccine's being released. And then in the UK, they're like, oh, we have hyper COVID now. Yeah. And then the first reported case is in the city, in the state to which my mom lives, which is Colorado. Yeah. So that's all scary. Cool. That's that's a great place to end it, I suppose. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, you know, this episode was uh, a bit more serious, like we said, but uh, we just, we wanted to be able to talk about these things that are going on in our world right now, because this is how we're processing it. We're just two friends having a conversation and trying to, uh, you know, hopefully help unpack this for some people too that are, are trying to understand what's happening. Absolutely. So... Be keeping an eye out. We're going to definitely do some sort of episode or bonus episode related to uh, the inauguration day. Yeah. Um, so please keep an eye out for that. Please also check out our bonus episodes as well um, yeah. that we're releasing about RuPaul's Drag Race. Yeah, we're doing uh, weekly recaps, you know, because the internet is so void of another RuPaul's Drag Race <laughs> recap. <laughs> I know. And who wants to listen to outfits? <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> or are just very uneducated opinions. Um, Absolutely. On these on these uh, darling entertainers. We're talented. <laughs> we're so talented. <laughs> uh, thank you, everyone, for tuning in. We will... Be back with you next week on Thursday. And uh, you can catch our bonus episodes in between then. Bye. Bye. This has been another episode of HM of a Secret Podcast. The hosts of HM of a Secret Podcast are Donatella My Secrets and Coco Jim Holiday. You may follow Donatella My Secrets at Donatella underscore My Secrets on Instagram. You may follow Coco Jim Holiday at Coco Jim Holiday on Instagram. Original music by Touche Douche and Party Favors. You can follow them respectively at the Touche Douche and at Party Favors Music on Instagram. For more exclusive content, visit www.ajemofasecretpodcast.com. That is a j e m of a secret podcast. Dot com. Be sure to tune in every week on Thursday for a new episode wherever you listen to podcasts. If you have any comments or questions, email us at a gem of a secret pod at gmail.com. Please don't forget to like, rate, and subscribe. Until next time, goodbye.